we are going to use paint.net to create a distressed rustic kind of cool looking image this would be really handy if you have uh, an image that you want to make it look like it's kind of retro or kind of grungy or just just a different take on an image so this is uh, fairly simple to use uh, simple to do on paint.net we're using paint.net because it's free you can download it for free paint.net is, is fairly basic to use uh, if you are more experienced and more familiar with other software of course you can use that software to do the same thing uh, adobe photoshop for example but for our purposes we're just going to use paint.net so the first thing we're going to do is create our image and we are going to choose 2200 by 3000. We want to make sure our resolution is 96. You can find all the criteria and image sizing best uh, practices in T-Shirt Gang in your dashboard when you create a product. Uh, there's a downloadable guide that can help you create images. There's also a Photoshop setup guide. So, and we'll show you where that is in a, in a little bit. Very handy. But for our purposes, we're just going to use these configurations this configuration for paint.net so the first thing we're going to do is we've created our image now we're going to bring in a layer uh, to create this look you need different layers so you've got your main image as layer one and then we're going to put a second layer on top of it so i have got a highway sign and here it is so this is a pretty popular type of uh, image for a product on demand on demand or a t-shirt so we're just gonna bring this into the middle a little bit and we're just gonna make it just a wee bit bigger so that looks pretty good so now that is layer one so what we're going to do is put a second layer on top of it which is actually going to create the distressed rusty grungy kind of look so now we're going to add another layer so we're going to import our image and i have got a picture of distressed wood that we're going to use and there it is. So the first thing you want to do is make it big enough so that it's covering the first layer image, just like that. Don't have to extend it to the entire length of the image, just so that it covers the other one. Now, I'm using wood because that's kind of the look that I like. Uh, you don't have to use wood. You don't have to use this particular type of, of image. Rust would be another good example, uh, dried mud or dried dirt even. It, it really depends on what kind of look or kind of image you're looking for. Uh, so you could just search out some images for yourself and, and, and pick what, you're, what you like. But for our purposes, we're going to use this distressed wood image. So first order of business is to make it black and white. So that is easy to do in paint.net. You go to adjustments and you hit black and white. And there we go. So this image is now black and white. The second part of this is uh, we want to make this layer uh, a little thinner. That is to say, uh, we don't want this layer, the second layer on top of the main image. We don't want it to be so loud and so uh, bright that it, that it overwrites that second layer. So what we're going to do is adjust the contrast and the brightness now, I've got these as presets. If you do this for the first time on paint.net, they're probably both going to be set here in the middle. So let's just set them back to normal for, and we can show you how it actually works. So contrast, you definitely want to get this as loud as it can be. So we're going to just blast this right out to 100%. But now, obviously, that's not going to work particularly well. Uh, it's going to be too much over top of the other image. So we're going to bring the brightness down a little bit. Now, this is going to be to your own, uh, you know, again, it's it's all based on the kind of look you're going for, for the brightness. I'm going to bring it up to, I usually like it at about 80. So we'll leave it there. Um, if you want it a little darker, of course, you could bring the brightness down. But generally, 80 is good for, for what I'm trying to do. So we're going to leave it at about 80. The contrast is 100%. And we hit OK. So now that's adjusted that layer's contrast. It'll make it a, a little bit easier to put on top of the other layer. So the next thing that we are going to do is select the magic wand on the left-hand side here. And we are going to take away these uh, darker spots, which are all connected. Um, that's going to take away most of the top layer and leave the rest to impose on the main image. Uh, so all you have to do is hit magic wand and just want to make sure that you're touching something that is connected to all the other points on the image. Now you might, uh, when you do this, 
with Magic Wand, uh, you might find that you're only using some parts of it. If that's happened, it's because you're on contiguous. You want to switch that to global. And that way it'll take away all of the points that that dark spot is touching. So now all we're going to do is take away that layer. So we're going to go delete layer. And now it's gone. So we've got the rustic kind of grungy effect. And we've got our main image. So all we have to do now to get rid of all of this is hit delete. And there we go. So now we have got a rusted up grungy image. And as I said, this is great if you're trying to make something look a little retro. Maybe it's something newer, but you want to kind of go for a retro kind of grungy beat up look. So that's uh, that, that's how you do it in paint.net. Fairly simple to do. Now, when you actually create uh, your product on T-Shirt Gang, uh, the best the, the way to best describe this image, we will go into our T-Shirt Gang right now. Uh, when you are actually naming the image, or naming the product at least, in your title, you want to put in exactly what it is. So for our purposes, we'll just say speed limit sign. Whoops. But you're also going to put in that uh, description of the image. So distressed, grunge would be a good one, uh, maybe retro, um, even cool. All of those words that are describing exactly what the, uh, the image quality is, you want to put those in there too, because people will be searching for that. And that'll tell Google that, uh, you know, people that are looking for this kind of a grungy retro kind of look, they, that, that will point them to your product, to your T-shirt. So don't be afraid of, of putting in those particular words when you're naming the product. When you're naming the product, and also if you need a little help with the sizing, with the quality of uh, image, uh, when you go into create product here. Um, You've got all the sizing requirements. They've also got a design guide that you can download. There's a Photoshop setup guide. So a lot of good resources right here as well if you need a little help in regards to sizing and criteria and that sort of thing. But that's basically it. It's it's not too hard to do. Uh, if you need any help with this uh, or anything T-shirt wise, you can always reach out to us, support at graphicteacoach.com. You can reach out to me as well, stu at graphicteacoach.com uh, if you need a, a little bit more of a refresher or uh, if you need some help on some other aspects of your t-shirt and product on demand store. So thanks for watching and happy selling.